basic research, the less glamorous side of science, is more often the most important, leading to sometimes unanticipated discoveries that pay off years later. Tonight, we begin a series of occasional reports on air and online exploring that work. NewsHour science correspondent Miles O'Brien starts with a report on one project trying to answer a huge question about the cosmos. <laughs> It's a long ride down to pay dirt at the Creighton Nickel Mine in Sudbury, Ontario. Perfect place to find precious metal and hopefully a priceless answer to one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. 6,800 feet below the surface, at the end of a long, dusty, dark tunnel, sits a hermetically sealed warren, brimming with intent technicians working on odd-looking scientific instruments. Welcome to Snow Lab, one of the most sophisticated particle physics observatories in the world, nestled deep underground to filter out the background radiation all around us at the surface. This is where one of the great unanswered questions in the realm of basic research may soon be answered. What exactly is dark matter? Nigel Smith is the director here. This is one of the long-standing contemporary problems in particle, particle astrophysics, is what the hell is this stuff? Yeah, it's just 20, 24% of the, the mass of the universe, we don't know what it is. While most of us marvel at the stunning beauty of the planets, stars, nebulas, and galaxies, particle physicists are fixated on the seemingly empty space in between. There has to be more out there than meets the eye. There has to be a significant fraction of the galaxy and a significant fraction of the universe is in a form that we don't yet understand. So how can they be so certain? Well, without it, what you see is not what you would get. At the edge of the Milky Way, stars move faster than they would if they were simply being tugged by the mass of the visible objects at the center of the galaxy. It is likely something else is pulling them along. Scientists may not understand what dark matter is, but they know enough about what it does to map it. And they are also pretty sure what it is made of. They're called WIMPs generically, so weakly interacting massive particles. Yes, WIMPs. They are the current best theory of what dark matter might be. They superseded an earlier idea called Massive Astrophysical Compact Halo Objects, or MACHOs. The WIMP is winning. Everything points towards the WIMP solution being the appropriate solution. So there are many projects that uh, are focused on trying to understand the WIMP uh, and discover the WIMP in, uh, in reality. These scientists are hunting in the blind, and it is a constant challenge to know how and where to look for the answer. But they think they have a good idea of how to find some WIMPs. So it's very critical that we actually maintain a constant temperature for the experiment. Ian Lawson works on an experiment at Snow Lab called Picasso. It uses superheated freon droplets to try and detect dark matter. When ionizing subatomic particles collide with the freon droplet in just the right way, it creates a gas bubble. There actually is like a little bubble right in there that hasn't been compressed yet. Not the dark matter bubble, of course. The bubbles that have appeared so far are created by a neutron radiation source used regularly to calibrate and test the instruments. What would the dark matter bubble look like? The dark matter bubble looks very, very similar to a neutron bubble. You so think? That's why oh, we haven't seen one. We right? haven't seen one, but that's what we think. Is there some disappointment that you haven't seen it yet? It's not a disappointment that we haven't seen it, but it just means that uh, we have to make our detectors more and more sensitive. That's what Chris Gillings and his team are working on in another vein of this mine of the mind. The experiment they are building is called DEEP. In this case, the target medium for detecting the ghostly dark matter particles will be liquefied argon. The hope is a WIMP will act like a cue ball, striking an argon nucleus in just the right way. The argon nucleus would recoil through the liquid argon. And a little bit of interest in chemistry would happen. At an energy, you'll temporarily make some molecules which will decay and emit a flash of light. So the irony is, although we don't, dark matter doesn't interact with light in any way, once it hits the argon nucleus, what we'll detect is a tiny flash of light. This device, a photomultiplier, is designed to see and record those tiny flashes with an array of extremely sensitive lenses and sensors. 
in order to give the detectors a fighting chance of success. Workers here keep snow labs squeaky clean to remove as much background radiation as they can. Everything that comes into the lab is thoroughly wiped down. Everything. And everyone as well. No exceptions for visiting reporters. I had to remove the clothes I wore in the dirty part of the mine, take a thorough shower, and then change into clean room clothing that stays in the lab. Snow Lab has some deep roots in the hunt for the tiniest particles that make up our universe. The predecessor organization here, the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, in the 1990s made some very significant scientific finds in the hunt for neutrinos, tiny particles which are emitted from the fusion reaction on our sun. For many years, physicists hoped neutrinos were the answer to the dark matter mystery. But the speedy, wispy particles only constitute 1% of the missing puzzle piece. Snow Lab physicist Christina Kraus is pretty sure this time they are homing in on the right answer. I think that we will see something very exciting, exciting within the next five to ten years. Hopefully the next five years. So I think the next generation of experiments has a very good shot at finding dark matter. This is Nobel kind of work, isn't it? If dark matter would be discovered, I think that would be worth the Nobel, Nobel Prize, yes. Legendary physicist Stephen Hawking came to visit Snow Lab in September of 2012. But make no mistake, this observatory is not the pre-anointed victor. The race for this Nobel is underway underground at competing facilities in the U.S., Europe, Russia, and Japan. This is big, basic research without a clear application in mind or even conceivable but it is completely worthwhile, according to Nigel Smith. The things that we develop to observe dark matter, the things that we develop to observe these neutrinos, they will have spin out. They will have spin out in technology and the knowledge that is developed to, uh, to understand the, the, the systems that we're building. So you never quite know where knowledge is going to take you. Physicist Clarence Virtue believes scientists here are leaving a legacy of knowledge for future generations. He heads up an experiment designed to catch neutrinos emitted by an exploding giant star, a supernova. We're building a, an ever more complete picture of uh, what the universe is, how it came about, uh, where it's going. So dark matter matters? Absolutely. It's, it, it's a piece of a real puzzle. <laughs> Uh, it, 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 it's rather annoying to particle physicists yeah. that uh, it is so important and yet we know next to nothing about it. Apparently when particle physicists get annoyed, they don't mess around. They have dug themselves some deep holes and the only way out may be to shed some light on some particles that don't reflect it and yet may enlighten us all.